Hey everyone, uh, Home Aquaponics here. Um, this video is about the fish. So, fish die. It's a very sad, upsetting thing that can make or break your day. You know, having a good day, go downstairs, fish is dead. Ah, what did I do wrong? So, really, you did do something wrong, but then again, you kind of didn't. And so that floats around your head quite a bit. Um, there's a lot to keeping fish, um, so kind of try to make this video under 10 minutes. It ought to be very, very helpful. First of all, I do not keep tilapia, tilapia, however you say it. Um, I think that people can find their fish in uh, too little of spaces. It really kind of bothers me. People that keep tilapia in rain barrels, I mean, that is just, come on, you're, you, the fish is a being. Fish is an animal that needs space. In its genetics is an ocean or at least a large uh, body of water and you know to keep a fish like a tilapia or tilapia in a small rain barrel is it's appalling I mean it's like who would do that to an animal and you know one of the most common things is those IBC tote containers those big square food grade crates that everybody uses and you know what those are too small for tilapia I mean, you got a fish that's a foot long, you got five, ten of them, they don't belong in a four foot crate. You know, so, that's just my personal opinion. I've seen people cram a lot more in there too, thinking that, oh, okay, well, our system is so big that, you know, really it's a thousand gallon system or ten thousand gallon system. Well, guess what? Still, that fish needs more space. And so maybe I'm just kind of a neurotic about that, and I, you know, I'm not trying to shut you down or anything, but, you know, I try to use goldfish here because this is just not a big enough setup for tilapia. I'm not saying, oh, I'm not a good enough aquaponic person, or maybe I just don't want to get into tilapia. I've never done that before, but really, I, I believe that the goldfish are about the right size for this situation. I would never think about putting a tilapia in there. He'd probably be jumping out. I mean... You know, so basically what you're seeing is about a 30, 30 gal here, and then there's another 20, 10 gals over there. And then, you know, probably about 5, 10 gal maybe at most going through the tubes. Um, anyway, this one being about the fish here, um, there's a number of diseases also, a number of things. Um, one is the heat. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it. Um, you know, I had a heater when I first started, hardly ever lost fish. And then I actually borrowed the heater for my aquarium, and I realized I needed it more there, and I figured goldfish were cold water fish. And so, you know, the thing about the gold uh, goldfish in cold water is they can live in cold water, but their susceptibility to fin rot is really bad. And especially in a smaller indoor environment like this, close to other fish, the fin rot is lethal. And so, um, having a heater is... Your number one thing. Now I did realize that they're saying that if you're running a big heater for say a larger system that that heater should not be up against the plastic. So here the heater is up against the plastic. It's still a little off. I've kind of positioned it to where it's a little farther away but this is not a large heater. This is not a heater that is warming the plastic near it at all. So I mean but if you're doing a large-scale operation and I'm assuming 500 watt heater, 1000 watt heater or something then yes, you actually, what I was thinking is, is get a sheet of glass or something, stick the heater to it, and then hang that on the wall. So you have this kind of, the glass being the majority of what gets that side heat, because that is the only time that this plastic is dangerous, is when it gets hot. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is that, uh, you know, the, the fish have many diseases. They're very susceptible to... Uh, especially, like I said, the fin rot. There's a few other things even, too. I noticed a hole in one of the bellies of the fish once, and I don't know what that is, you know. And I, It's just kind of like, it's tough because the fish are like 33 cents. And so, you know, I don't want to be in the mentality of, oh, I'll just get new fish. And I've had to do that, you know. But ideally, you do want to treat the fish to where they live a long life. And I do have a few bigger ones in there. Um, my main issue is the fin rot. And then also when my water gets low, if the plants tend to drink a lot of water overnight or I just forgot to kind of fill up that back end over there, the ammonia spikes get pretty high, I think. And so 
Also, something has been snails causing the ammonia. I put in some stuff to actually kill the snails, and that, I think, really spiked the ammonia, too. So, you know, it's it's everything in aquarium, uh, you know, person will tell you. You got a heater, you got uh, fin rot, you probably want to use. Um, actually, the main easiest one is salt, but you can't do too much salt. Um, if you do too much salt, you can actually hurt the plants, obviously, so... I still recommend a little. I recommend just, you know, go get some aquarium salt. It might not be labeled organic, but let's face it, it's just salt. And what I found out about organic is that what goes to feed the plants does not necessarily have to be labeled organic. It just cannot be chemicals. So you cannot be feeding the plants chemicals if you, you know, give it salt, for instance, well, the salt doesn't say it's organic, but technically you're not using a chemical to feed your plants. So they consider it kind of a split system. It's funny because I don't know about the food, but also food. That's a tough one, too, because if I get them a little higher quality food, um, you know, that's even debatable as well as price, you know, and stuff. A lot of people complain about the fish food prices. You know, the Wardley pond pellets, okay, probably totally GMO, worst thing you could possibly have. But, you know, it's $10 for a giant bag, and once again, you're not really feeding the plants it, you're feeding the fish. But there is some skepticism as to whether or not that could be considered organic, but as of right now, it is. That's the funny thing, I've done a lot of research, and, you know, what isn't organic is if I go in here and I decide to add some miracle Grow. you know, that's not organic. And so, maybe it's not 100% organic to add the salt, but it's... You know, you're not using chemical fertilizers or pesticides or, you know, certain chemical fungicides, things like that. So, and, you know, the hard thing is, is maybe my fish might even live longer if I did use some of those chemicals, but I don't. So, the main thing besides a little bit of salt and the heater is uh, tea tree oil. I've had great success. That is the one thing that truly can prolong or, pro, you know, promote the health of fish with fin rot. Um, the problem is, is it's not really a cure. It's kind of something you have to somewhat constantly give them. I recommend about um, one drop per gallon every day, every other day if you've got a serious problem, maybe even every day for a few days. Um, I would say even if you didn't have a problem with fin rot, that I would go with at least once a week of a nice healthy dose of tea tree oil. And uh, together, the heater, the tea tree oil, and the salt will do you pretty good for keeping the goldfish alive. Once again, they're feeder fish, you know. I mean, and it is just heartbreaking when they die on you. And, I mean, it just, I don't want to feel like, oh, I can go replace them. It's no problem. And, like I said, I'm not doing tilapia, you know. I mean, I'm not going to fit them in the small space. And I am aware that they are less prone to the fin rot as the goldfish. The goldfish just happen to be a little more... You know, susceptible, they're a little dirtier of a fish, naturally they're going to pick up a little more funguses and stuff like that too, so, anyway, this, yeah, this video, it's, it's, um, it's been a challenge raising fish, I will say, it's, it's also been extremely rewarding, and I'm very proud to say that this is all coming from fish, I mean, you know, and this is a little aquaponic system, I'm not here to boast about, you know, how professional th this is, the kind of money this makes, or anything, this is a home system, and that's why, you know, this is considered home aquaponics. And, you know, the, the goldfish, they're 33 cents, and that's partly what makes this so realistic as well as, you know, this is a fish that you can feed fairly cheaply, and, um, you, you know, you can replace them if they die, and it's not the end of the world if they die. You don't have to order them from some distributor if they die. I mean, you go down to PetSmart, you grab a few more, you know. But, like I said, that's kind of heartbreaking, and I'm not attempting to do that. Um, but, yeah, I would say, you know, temperature is your main, main thing. I've really learned that it costs a little bit to run the heater, electricity-wise, but you're going to save much more than if you were to be dosing it all the time with tea tree oil because of fin rot. And you really can only use so much salt, and if you were to try and fix a problem with salt or anything else, you could really damage the plants. And all the other methods for treating it uh, involve chemicals. So, yeah, I don't want to go on too long this video. Keep it under 10 minutes here. Um, but, yeah, it's a joy. I mean, I love my fish. I love coming down. I say hi to them every time I come down here. And, 
and uh, they're just so mellow, you know, they mellow me out, and I just think, it, you know, to me, this is a learning experience. I'm just trying to share what I have learned, and I think that the problem with a lot of these aquaponic videos is they're trying to show everybody these large-scale systems, and they're kind of scaring everybody off from the small stuff, and then I see a lot of small-scale systems where, you know, guys really aren't getting worth their while. I mean, it's a hobby for them, but, I mean, you know, I haven't cut these in about a week or so, and it is due. I mean, I am definitely due for it is time to cut. I kind of was waiting to, you know, make these videos, so I didn't want to quite cut it yet. But, you know, I've gotten this. You're looking at the, uh, you know, this is the fourth or fifth round of heavy chopping that I've done to these plants. So, you know, keep in, keep in tune, keep uh, watching, because I am having some success, and don't want to, you know, don't want to brag, and I don't want to set myself up for, uh, you know, knocking on wood or anything like that, but, you know, yeah, it's a simple tank, 30 gallons, and, uh, and then, you know, biofilter, I've talked about that before, um, you know, it, it, you need something, I mean, you need, you need a lot of things, um, and so it, it can be done, that's all I'm saying, it's a simple system, it can be done, it's worthwhile, it may not, you know, you're not going to get a lot of money from this, but if you're into the idea of learning and you're into the idea of, you know, having some food for yourself and that you can say you grew or, I mean, I will say this is the freshest food, that, you know, that I'm going to get in this town. I mean, we have three pretty good grocery stores, but there's nowhere where I can go and chop this down and have it the next night. So anyway, yeah, thank you, fish.